programs. So if care is not taken, there will be a buildup of um, stress. May the Lord deliver us and give us grace in Jesus' name. There are so many things she mentioned about financial stress, financial demands. May the Lord bless us so that financially we will not be stressed out in Jesus' name. And uh, one thing she said about uh, that I wrote here, people you are working for will leave when you die. It's powerful. We should take note of it. I, if I look at all my uh, annual leave that I take, either I take to take care of my children or I take because of programs. Not going for leave, not going for vacation. But you see these people, they will go to this vacation somewhere and they will talk about how they have fun with the Lord help us in Jesus' name. People have different mindset, but we should not because I know a pastor, not over within this region, but different region, this just said, Jesus Christ didn't go for vacation. So <laughs> his member was going for vacation. It was like a rebellion. <laughs> May the Lord deliver pastors of that sort in Jesus' name. <laughs> There's time for everything. There's time for everything. The Lord will help us to have a balanced life in Jesus' name. So many important things. Our spouses will be happy. Amen. So spouses create happiness in the house, both uh, the pastor and the pastor's wife. Let us understand each other so that we'll be able to uh, enjoy life without allowing the demands of life be create into uh, our family. Sometimes it's your work that the demand over there becomes a problem. And we bring that to the family or to the house. We should learn how to put work at work. Praise the Lord. Work at work. If we are able to do that, that will help us. The good God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. At times, <laughs> just well, praise the Lord. <laughs> so many things I wrote down here, but uh, because of our time, I wouldn't go through all of it. But the bottom line is, we should. it should not lead us to a situation whereby we are being depressed and bringing spiritual uh, dryness, as um, she said. Sometimes when a leader falls, people begin to pinpoint their hands. But you never know, because when you are stressed and the person who is there to give you a hug, you were looking for a hug, you didn't get a hug from your family, and somebody came and gave a hug. And that creates what? Trouble. I'm just using hug as an example. Praise the Lord. That's true, right? One day I was I was going to hug my wife and say, uh -huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, come, let me hug you. Praise the Lord. This was household, not outside. <laughs> she doesn't know what uh, I'm going through. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Because things that are, we are not used to, things that are not normal in quote unquote in African context. Sometimes it becomes like, what is this? <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The bottom line is we all need each other. We all need each other. And uh, we should also allow God to take over so that we will not destroy each other. Amen. The most yeah. difficult thing in life, in handling a, 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 the most difficult job, is not about the church, it's about management of people. And praise the Lord. Management of what? People. As he said, Moses, it was not about the, the, the job of being carrying them, right? It was about the people. The people, the people, the people, and while they were complaining, he, he strike. Uh, he, he also said the way that he shouldn't have said, God said, 
why do you call my people stiff neck? Meanwhile, God himself has said it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So there are things, that's why Jesus said that there are things God said you should be careful not to see. And there are things Jesus did. You shouldn't um, do it because Jesus did. You should be careful to understand whether God expects you to do. Praise the Lord. The good God will help us. Amen. And we give all our leaders and our leaders the grace to manage people very well to the glory of God. At this point, I will end here and uh, I will say that we thank our, our seminarian very much for this wonderful um, presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, I will give you a few minutes. I want to thank Sister Manju very, very much. Come and clap for her one more time. And your husband should be very proud of you. Now, why do I say that? When you see women that support their spouse in ministry, there's almost nowhere I see the husband in a church program that I don't see her. Even before they went to Richmond, the same thing with our, with our leader here. There's no time you see him, maybe because they have little kids. They need each other. But even without, with or without the little kids, that's a good thing. Partnership in ministry. How many of you know my wife? That's what, why I'm saying that is, when you are struggling in ministry without the partnership of your wife, it's very hard. She will think they're just using you. And it's not like the wife is selfish. Women want their men at home. But when a woman sacrifices the husband for the ministry, that's a lot of sacrifice. And she may not know, I've taught stress management for hours. I've never seen anybody else articulate it the way she does. And I've listened to other people. I almost didn't want to come. Because I was somewhere else. My son is currently in the hospital. But I said, let me go and listen. Maybe I will learn something too. And I will learn a lot. If you check your phone, I sent you a text message. You see, text message. See there, Mr. Manju. If you check your phone, I sent you a text message. It's a problem. All the things she's saying, I stopped writing because I did well. Uh, she's just, just flowing with, in my spirit. And this is the first time I've seen somebody who's a professional and a participant and a victim at the same time on the subject. You know what I mean by that? She's a pastor's wife. She's a psychiatric, psychiatric professional. But she's also somebody who can help. And all the things you are telling us, I hope you are doing to your, your own husband. Are you supporting him? Are you lining up his clothes when he's going out somewhere? Are you when the, one of the greatest things my wife ever told me? I remember that day, like yesterday, we were coming from church. And she looked me in the eye, said, Where do you get the time to preach the messages that you preach? That's one of the most powerful things I ever heard from her. She may not know how impact that means why she was listening to me at church. This man, I used to work in the post office then, and will come back late, six days a week. Hold on until you leave. I mean, don't go home until you are told to go home. And they'll say, you, management doesn't hit the clock. Say, hit the clock, we pay you. So I have no time. I will see preach on Sunday. I will leave work at 6 a.m. or 6.37, drive straight to church and preach. Okay, you are not home yesterday. You are not home on Friday. Okay, why did you have that to preach this message? That tells you the power of encouragement. Let's, whoever is the spouse here, thank God all our ministers are the men. The spouses are women. Please, let's support the women. And one of the things she said, let's, let's encourage our pastors too. Your pastor preaches good. Pastor, that was a nice message to me. It was like you were ministering to me. That will put him on fire again to do more work next week. Whatever we can do, she said it all. I don't have to. Add. I'm just trying to emphasize the little, little, little thing she's saying. She was just like music to my soul. 
that how I wish we could tell everybody in the church to be doing this. To encourage your pastor, even handkerchief. You see the pastor sweating. He's angry. You go on your phone right away, Amazon.com. Put a dozen of handkerchief to his house. See, these people show I was sweating and I didn't have a catchy. They bought me a catchy. Then he will come and sweat some more because now he knows he has, he has a catchy. Don't want to take too much of your time. Come. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is added spices to the, <laughs> the whole thing. Thank God. God bless you, sir. So, uh, we are, because of our time, we'll call the vice president to come and read uh, um, the mission statement to us. God bless you. Before I read the mission statement, I want us all to, to put our hands together for Sister Mando again. <laughs> Praise the living God. You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to say that, uh, you know, she did a good job. And if possible, I would like Sister Mandu to talk to us during the workers' meeting or a combined service. I tell you, this sister has resources that we can gain from. Praise the living God. So now that Pastor Coyote, you are here, Pastor Wharton, you are here, please. Let's make it happen that she can talk to us some of us are really stressful. You know, even at my age, you can't imagine. I worked 10 hours yesterday because I had to take the kid from home. I have to be at home 7 o'clock, take him to school, and I will not come home until 5. And in the evening again, at 11 o'clock, I have to go and do the work. So I was just coming from work. I just came from work this morning, came home, washed. Even the lunch that my wife prepared for me, I couldn't eat it. It is right in the car. So I tell you, pastors are going through things. I wish our members were in this meeting. Let's encourage our members to be attending this AMF meeting, because we are learning a lot. Praise the living God. I believe we're going to support our pastors. Praise the living God. Now we come to the AMF vision and mission. The vision mission statement. I hope everybody had uh, maybe an old copy of uh, the program because the mission statement does not change. It's the same every month. Mission statement, working together for the kingdom of God. The African Ministers Fellowship is a non-profit interdenominational organization formed to reach out to all African descent Christian ministers in the Washington metropolitan area. The body may be African in origin, but its fellowship or meeting have been attended by people of various nationalities. The interdenominationality of AMF makes it unique. In heaven, there are no denominations. Thanks to God for the ministers on mission, building together for the kingdom of God. The fellowship was formed for the purpose of, among other things, we want to create, to commit ourselves to getting people through into a deeper relationship with God, to exalt our God always to evangelize our communities, to edify and equip the believers for a long-lasting 
successful ministry. To bring people to a point of realization, restoration, and relationship with God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To support, lift up, and encourage one another as we run the Christian race. To help one another in building strong evangelism team, music ministry, supporting various other church, churches programs, empowering our members, and improving their skills through seminars and workshops. To embark on joint evangelistic outreaches and create awareness of the necessary, of the necessary tools for church growth. We believe that if different nations could come together under the umbrella of the United Nations, despite their religious, political, cultural, social, and language differences, the Christian body, under the leadership of various appointed, anointed, and God-approved ministers, should be able to work together despite our denominational differences. I pray the Lord will help us to adhere to this mission and to be able to work for the Lord so that in the end, we are going to be rewarded in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are most grateful to God that he has brought us this far. Our next meeting next month, second uh, uh, Saturday, as we all know already, in May. And uh, if there are any announcement that probably we will need to bring it added, then it must be forwarded to the secretary a week, a week before the meeting. And uh, the leaders also will meet on 17th, hallelujah. <clears throat> we continue to announce $50 check per the mother and a 25 per the branch. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I would like to mention one thing before um, Pastor Larry come and give us, uh, before the offering, right? Then Pastor Larry will come and give us. The $50 each, uh, please, I will, don't want to let people raise up your hand if you have paid. Or oh, 25, sorry. So please, uh, each church should try their best to pay their $50. And in view that we've been using this place for um, as like a main location, um, when we meet this Wednesday for, for leaders meet, we will discuss the means of footing the, uh, the refreshment. So let's, uh, I don't wanna say it here, but when we meet there, let's uh, we'll talk about it. Praise the Lord. The secretary. Oh. Praise the Lord. We will stand, and whatever we've brought, we will lift our token and offering up as we pray over. But I will thank you, bless your name for. The token. We pray that you accept it, our offerings, and use it for your work. Father, wherever the money is coming from, we pray that you multiply it according to your word. And those who do not have, doors will be open for them. So in our next meeting, they will have some to give to glorify you. Bless us all together this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Thank you. You may have your seat, please. Praise the Lord. Uh, time for benediction. Um, time that we just want to thank the Lord. Just bless the name of the Lord for what we have been blessed today. The servant the Lord has used to bless us. Let's give thanks unto the Lord for this wonderful month and the month to come. The Lord has been there with us, and this God will always be with us. Let us bless him. Father, we thank you. We give glory. We give honor unto you for your word that, O oh God of heaven, that you have spoken to us. Father, we just bless the name of the Lord. Bless that more unctions upon the servants the that he has used today, that the next time we meet more of his glory, more of God's power upon us, his children, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father and our Lord, we just bless you again for this day. We give glory for what you have done and what you continue to do for us this month and the next month to come. But that will be exalted a little higher in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. The grace want to go. This is of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit being with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.